Hey everyone, welcome back to TheClinicalTrialsGuru.com. Again, that website address is www.TheClinicalTrialsGuru.com. I got asked an interesting question, and I know I always say that, but I'm, I'm always interested anytime I get a new, a new question. Uh, but this one in particular, because I would think it'd be boring. I would think that most people wouldn't want to hear about this, but it's, it's involved with how do clinical trial, how do research companies get paid? How does a company like South Coast Clinical Trials get paid? Basically, I've covered in the past the difference between academic institutions and private clinics such as South Coast Clinical Trials. Well, the academic institutions usually get grants. They get some kind of grant to conduct the study, whereas the private clinics like South Coast Clinical Trials, we get paid based on enrollment. They're, we don't get grants from the government to do studies. We get paid from the drug companies based on our enrollment. And so here's how a typical contract for a private company like South Coast Clinical Trials is structured. We get a contract to enroll 10 to 20 subjects. For the sake of simplicity, let's just say 20. So we get a contract to enroll 20 participants in a bipolar study, as an example. Uh, we can enroll zero or 20. Um, it doesn't matter. We would only get paid based on actual patient enrollment and activity. So let me explain what that means. Every single protocol has a number of visits. Whether it's 8 visits, 20 visits, 30 visits, each protocol is different. Each visit has different procedures that need to be done. So when we negotiate our contracts, with the drug companies or the CROs for conducting the clinical trials, we look at what procedures are done at each visit and then we come up with a fair uh, compromise or a fair value for what each visit is ultimately worth. Um, and some visits are much more complex than others. So each visit has a value, a monetary value. And we only get paid based on whether a study participant comes in and completes their visit successfully. Now, we get paid every 30 days or sometimes quarterly every three months. So we may have, let's just use the example of monthly payments, payments received within 30 days. We may have 10 visits within that monthly period. So these visits will will add up and the drug company at the end of that pay period will will verify that these visits occurred and release a payment. Um, in theory that's how it works. When, if, if the contract states quarterly payments, you know, they add up how many visits we've had at the end of three months and then release the payments. Keep in mind the research clinic has to cover all the costs associated with conducting that trial from paying the doctors to paying the study coordinators, to compensating the patients, to paying the rent, the overhead, all the bills, you name it, before we even get one dime from the drug company. And oftentimes, these payments don't occur on time because the drug companies are big, they've got a lot of people to pay, they've got a lot of different vendors that they contract with and outsource their work to. By the time they get around to actually paying the clinic, it, it may have been more than a month or it may have been more than what's in the contract and there's really nothing we can do as a site to collect these things faster except to keep calling them and reminding them they are good about paying the amount that's owed but they're notorious for being slow as far as paying or uh, reimbursing the site so the issue of receiving the money is never the question the issue is when do you receive it hopefully that helps it's important to remember that the PI, the principal investigator associated with the clinic conducting that study, his name is on the contract. So a clinic like South Coast Clinical Trials may have grossed $40,000 worth of patient activity for a particular study in a month. That, that, all that money does not go to the principal investigator. Most of that money goes to paying bills, paying the staff, paying the doctors, paying the overhead, paying the rent. By the time we actually pay the PI what we negotiated with him, um, it's nowhere near what we received. So a lot of the critics out there will look at 
a doctor's name and say, oh, uh, Dr. So-and-so received this much money this period. Um, that's not his money. That's There's cost to running the business, significant cost to running the business. And in this industry, specifically clinical trial, running a clinical trial research clinic, you burn through cash very rapidly because you have to have excellent staff working there. You have to have nice facilities. You have to have state-of-the-art equipment. So by the time you actually receive your payment, you're lucky if you're breaking even or making a slight profit. Um, so for those critics that are out there, um, you know, claiming that the doctors are making so much money from research, there are those who do. If they own their own clinics, they do. But in the case of South Coast Clinical Trials, um, we're not owned by any physicians. Hopefully this helps. Hopefully this answers some questions regarding how payments are are, are given or how payments are distributed to the research clinics from the pharma companies and the CROs and let me know if, if this uh, helps answer your question. If you've got any follow-up questions, let us know. We'll be happy to do another video on this. Thanks a lot. This is Dan from TheClinicalTrialsGuru.com.